Joining us now is Republican Senator from Tennessee, Marsha Blackburn. Senator, always good to talk to you and great of you to be here this morning. First, wanted to get your reaction to that. Well, Joe Biden must have missed the lesson from his mother, think before you speak, because this shows what the Democrats think about African-American voters. They take it for granted. They assume that you have to vote for them. And Sandra, it is the exact same thing they do when it comes to gender. They take women for granted. You're not fully a woman unless you're supporting a Democrat. That is their thought process. They do not think they need to earn your vote, that your vote should be a given to them. But you heard him walk back those remarks uh, saying he shouldn't act like a wise guy. And he, he said that he was cavalier in that statement. And he, he said he does not take um, he does not take them for granted. So do you think he could be forgiven from those comments or and move on from them? Comments like this help individuals to realize what the Democrats truly think about different groups. And what they do is not think about what is good for the nation, what is good for everybody. What they do is say, well, we ought to get this vote, and we ought to get the other vote, and we ought to get that vote. Mm -hmm. And that is how they look at people, not as individuals, but as groups. And that is one of the big differences, I think, between the parties. You know, when it comes to women, they want you to be the Stepford Wives of liberalism and tout and parrot everything that they say. They take African-American voters for granted. But Sandra, President Donald Trump has done more for the African-American community than any president in recent history. Look at what has transpired with the economy. Lower unemployment, higher wages, prior to COVID. And these are things that the African-American community has taken note of. Individual freedoms, focus on choice in education. President Donald Trump has a good record with the African-American community. And you're going to see the benefits of that in November. Interesting to get your thoughts on that. And we will see how that debate plays out as we move closer to Election Day in 2020. Uh, meanwhile, I know that you and your fellow senators have had a meeting. Um, I believe it was Thursday. Uh, you're looking yeah. forward to digging deeper into the Susan Rice's role in the Trump campaign and the surveillance. We saw the, the revealed emails this past week. What happens next with all this, Senator? Yes, you're exactly right. We had our meeting on Thursday with the Judiciary Committee. We're going to reconvene on June 4th. We will vote out the subpoenas. There's a long list of those. People can follow my website or social media and get all of that. Chairman Lindsey Graham is listing, leading this effort. We will issue the subpoenas. We will bring people in. Susan Rice, Jim Comey need to be heard from. Susan Rice needs to explain exactly what she knew because she knew the FBI was spying. Jim Comey needs to talk about how this got started. Who cooked up this plot? And how did this set itself afoot? And Christopher Ray, my goodness, you were just talking to Andy Biggs about this. Sandra, it is about time that they did an investigation. And we need to bring all of these people before us at Judiciary. If we need to do criminal referrals, we will do those. We're looking forward to the Durham report. That is where you will have criminal indictments that come forward. But here's what Tennesseans tell me. They are sick of this. They are tired of a two-tier justice system. They are tired of elitist feeling as if they can push all of this off on the American people and say, we're above the law, but here's another set of rules that apply to you. And with Susan Rice, she did not think she would ever get caught. Then she started to think, this thing is unraveling. She wrote herself a memo. She needs to come and explain herself to the Senate Judiciary Committee. As far as unmasking and getting to the bottom of all of this, Senator Kennedy was on with Maria this time last week, uh, and he was asked what Congress is going to ultimately do about unmasking. Here's how he responded, and we'll get your reaction.
What's Congress going to do about it? So far, nothing. It's been five months since Inspector General Horowitz pointed out that the Steele dossier was rubbish. Um, only Bill Barr's done anything so far. Uh, but Congress no, has done absolutely nothing. What do you say to that, Senator? I say it is time for us to dig into this and find out exactly who it was that was unmasking and who all was unmasked. When you look at the fact that they're supposedly they had uh, surveilled the entire Trump transition team. I vice chaired that transition team. Uh, Devin Nunes was on it. Jeff Sessions was on it. General Flynn was on it. Sandra, were they looking at all of us? Were they surveilling our communications? We were there to assist the vice president. We were there to assist the president. And so were they digging into this to find out who we were talking to? And mm -hmm. we know they used information to sabotage the Trump uh, transition and then administration. And they mm -hmm. should be able to account for this. People are ready for daylight on it. Senator, for the short time that we have left, I was scrolling through uh, the Twitter feed yesterday and I saw you post a video very firmly stating we stand with the people of Hong Kong. Wanted to quickly get your reaction to China now imposing the a national security law on Hong Kong. You have put out a statement. China will pay. Final thoughts. Uh, China is going to be held to account for this. They're looking at the global community. The global community knows China had an agreement with Hong Kong, two different sets and two different systems of government. Now they're trying to backtrack on that because their economy is shrinking. The world is looking at them and how they have mishandled the COVID-19 crisis. They want China to pay for this, and now they're seeing China's overreach. I stand with Hong Kong. China should be held to account, and it is time for us to make certain that we do hold them accountable, whether it is through returning manufacturing to the United States, having them waive some of the debt that they hold of our debt, having them work to make other countries whole. This debt diplomacy should turn into debt forgiveness when it comes to China. Senator Marsha Blackburn, our best to you and to your state on this Memorial Day weekend. Appreciate your time so this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra.